Hi, everyone. Coming to you from freezing Bloomington, Indiana. My name is Tatiana Kolovu. Stronger is the name of my newsletter. In this past month, we talked a lot about how to come up with exercises and drills to help you be better at impromptu speaking. Impromptu speaking is a skill that really sets you apart. If you can be concise, if you can speak to the point, and if you can really get attention with your responses, uh, you really can, can uh, stand out in the workplace or in any other social situation. So tell me a little bit of where you're coming in from. And while you're doing that, uh, you probably noticed this is not my living room. The cat has been expelled this month. Uh, the the, the Wi-Fi situation in our home was a disaster. I'm not sure what happened. So I had to, to quickly, swiftly move and bring everything into our studio. I see that Karen Fernandez has made some comments about the recording. And Karen, yes, I'm sitting and standing at the front desk of Ethos Fitness, but it makes for a pretty good backdrop and really strong Wi-Fi. So tell me a little bit about what you're wanting to learn or where you're coming in from. And I will definitely, yes, uh, the replay is coming at you. I see some questions. Now you can uh, follow me as we get uh, going. Tunisia, fantastic, I love it. Thank you, Huda. Uh, we are recording this and we will play it again later on the LinkedIn platform. And hopefully a lot of the comments or a lot of the tools that I share, uh, we will also drop in the platform for you. Let's go Alabama. Tristan, thank you for joining us. Where else is everyone coming in from? I love it. We're also going to drop in a link to the Stronger newsletter. Tom Morris in the house. I need to get together with you. I owe you a big update, my friend. So uh, if you're not following me on the newsletter, please do. Next month, and I'll talk about this as well, we're talking about uh, speaking strategies for non-native speakers. So a little bit of the inspiration of today's topic on artificial intelligence comes from me not being a native speaker. So using artificial intelligence to make speaking better. I, uh, Some of you know, I teach business communication in the Kelly School of Business, Algeria and Munich, Mumbai, India. Fantastic, Jennifer. Thank you. My mom was born and raised in Mumbai, a special place in my heart for Mumbai. Peru, Lima, and Tempe, Arizona, much warmer than we are here. So today we're talking about artificial intelligence tools for speaking excellence, uh, for becoming a better speaker. And for me, you see here uh, on my right, I use voice memos quite a lot. I'm always trying to, to buy a little bit of time. I use them on my iPhone uh, that I can just maybe send a message. It's a little bit more personable and also use voice recorder on my desktop and my laptop. And that allows me to do audio messages. And what I've found quite often is that there are times where my, I love South Africa and Pacific Beach, Poland. Jay, oh my goodness, you sent so many messages to us and our courses appreciate it. So as we get started, for me, I've been thinking, does, as a non-English speaker, does the recording recognize me? And could there be a way to get some feedback back from the recording? By the way, a big shout out. I don't know if you use this feature, but you're able to do a voice messaging recording in the private messaging of LinkedIn. I use that all the time. And if you're one of the learners in my courses, you think that, oh, it's so personable, so nice of you. What you don't know is that it's easier for me to record than to type something out and write it out. So artificial intelligence has been around for many years and it continues to get smarter and better because that's what it does as we give it more data and more information. So I wonder if some of you are using some of these tools and I'd love to know what they are as I share some of them. Uh, hello from Peru and hello from Turin, Italy. Fantastic to see you. So the first, uh, when you think of artificial intelligence, you may think as I'm learning a different language, uh, apps like Duolingo allow you to practice your accent, your intonation, and actually give you some feedback. But what happens if you want to practice your speaking skills and if you really want some feedback on your energy or if you want some feedback on your clarity or if you want some speed feedback on your speed if you want some feedback on your ability for the audience to understand you 
So first, I have used this app quite often, again, from a productivity standpoint, together with the voice memos and the voice recorder. But I like uh, the uh, Otter app, which is an app where uh, it transcribes what it is that you're talking about. Sometimes I learned British English in school. Yes, uh, the Lori and the Lou. Uh, but I may pronounce or speak a word differently and the app will mistake in it in the description or transcription. So I know that I need to change the way that I may be pronouncing something specifically. So if you're working on pronunciation or intonation and you want to, to see if an app is understanding you, uh, I would recommend that you use Otter. And then again, it's definitely, there's a free option to it as well. But I want to dive a little deeper today. I have several tools and a little surprise at the end to share with you. One app that I like to share with users is the app called Like So. And for the ones of you coming in from many parts of the world, in America, we tend to use like when we don't really mean to say such as. We tend to say, well, this is like, and I'm like, and I'm going to be like doing this. I remember first when I came to the United States, the first summer, I went back to Greece and everyone said, you sound so American. And I thought, come on, I, I've tried very hard not, to, not to, to keep my authentic voice and my accent. And I say, why do you say that? And they said, you use the word like when you don't mean to. Oops, I was. Part of the reason I was doing that, I was trying to assimilate into the U.S. culture, but I probably was overdoing it too. I'm seeing here, Chad says, avoma.ai. I'll check that out. It's a bot that takes transcription notes and recognizes the users taking turns during meetings. There is so much work that's being done right now in that space. I probably need to do a, an AI just on that because you can gather a lot of the intelligence that comes from meetings and AI definitely is a tool that helps you to do that. Um, my Leeds UK user says, I'm a native Greek speaker and I believe AI crashes when it goes to my pronunciation recognition when I speak English. That's funny, but that's a good training tool, I would say. I don't know your LinkedIn username, but I'm guessing it's Costas or Costandina, maybe. So as we move forward, the cool thing about like so is that it gives you it gives you a grade. So it gives you a you can practice with impromptu topics that it gives you. And I like that a lot because it keeps you on your toes. You practice an impromptu topic for one to two minutes. I think it has an option for 30 seconds and then it gives you a grade. It gives you a speed grade. It gives you how many fillers you used. And if you tend to say so all the time before you get started. I always tell my students, no, so just go right into it. And afterwards, it gives you a report. So for so for the price of $4.99 in the app store, you can have this on your phone and constantly practice. So I'm looking at the notice here. I think exchange uh, with native <clears throat> can help more. Is it absolutely? Yes. If you can have an hour meeting where you talk for 30 minutes and the other person does and you do conversational, that's a great way to learn the language. Back to Duolingo, a little uh, side story. Uh, my daughter, Melina, has been learning Greek using Duolingo. So I tell her to tell me the, the notes of what she's learning and then I'll call and leave her a voicemail message using a lot of the terms that she's learning just in a way to, to get her. Elena, thank you. Right. So... Uh, I said, Costas, your name is Elena or Lenny, and definitely <laughs> that's the same name day as well. So as you're thinking about Duolingo back to and using AI, I want to show you another uh, specific tool that, that you may not have seen or you may not know exists. It's called the Presenter Coach, and this is embedded in the newer version of PowerPoint if you use that. I'm sure the Keynote, I don't have a Mac, but I'm sure the Keynote also uses this. So this is fantastic because you're practicing your slides. Back to Melina, uh, my daughter, as a junior at The Ohio State University, she's presenting at a conference soon. And yesterday she was on the phone uh, with my husband practicing while she was using her slides. So the reason that I like the uh, presenter coach here is that it not only gives you, hey, you're going too fast, slow it down. 
but it also gives you inclusive language flags. So if you say you guys all the time in the United States, we tend to, to do that a little more. I say everyone or um, all of you or y'all, if you want to do that. So it's a little bit more inclusive. Or if you say manpower, uh, this program will grab it and say that's not being inclusive enough. It doesn't like, I think I'm going to show you this in a full, this program doesn't like profanity, obviously. And there's uh, a lot of videos on YouTube where people test it. It doesn't like um, uh, words that are not specific or not concise. It will give you some feedback. If What I love is that it does, it gives you feedback. Are you reading slides out loud or are you being extemporaneous, which is a really, really good skill for presentation. So I'd like for you to think of that and maybe use that. So, so far you have a tool such as the app Like So. If you're learning a different language, Duolingo, you have an app such as Like So. You have the presenter coach that you can practice specific presentations. Now, the next two apps that I'll tell you about, I have a personal relationship with uh, the creators. The first app is called ORI, Oratory Artificial Intelligence. And uh, Oratory Artificial Intelligence, or ORI, is used to improve a lot of your speaking skills. So this is Danish. Danish is uh, right now couldn't join us live because he's in Tanzania. That's where he lives. And the time difference is quite wonky. So we couldn't have him join us. But when you use ORI, the feedback you can see here is specifically on clarity, it's on uh, pacing, it's on conciseness, cohesiveness, energy in general. I like the part about energy because quite often we tend to lag a little bit on energy when we get tired or sometimes we have high energy in the beginning of a presentation, but towards the end we fizzle bop. So if we record ourselves, the artificial intelligence tool can catch that and give us some more feedback with this as well. So uh, this is these are these are slides that uh, Danish uh, kindly shared with me too. Now I'm going to make this a little bigger so that you can see this here, and you can see that it has different paths that you can take. So you can work on a presentation, or you can uh, do it for a, a motivational or compelling communication where it may read more the energy of your voice, or it looks at conciseness or confidence, the way that you come across. And this is a really important piece because you may be speaking or you may be practicing for different occasions and the artificial intelligence tool will, will train you and get you there. I'll show you in just a bit what uh, the scorecard looks like in the ORI place, uh, where it will give you your, your grade. As you can see here, it's giving you sort of your, your total performance and how your speed is looking and how your fillers were. And there's a lot of interaction uh, as far as, as that's related and that's concerned. So finally, uh, it's free when you try it out, uh, but and it's it's available for organizations to to buy on an enterprise scale. And the Ori Pro is at uh, ten dollars a month as we go through. So these are some tools that uh, that I wanted to share, and I'm going to pause for a little bit uh, just to see if you have questions. I'm looking through the comments. It's hard to do this spin plates uh, at once at the same time. So is there a Mac version for like so, or is it only on an iPad? It's actually uh, on, uh, I think you're asking, do, can you get it off the store? And if it's, uh, uh, you can have them on non-Apple phones. Is that right, Carlos? I think it's possible, but I'm not 100% sure uh, because I have an iPhone. I haven't tested it. So you can check that. However, it is online as well. I think you can download it on your desktop as well. Let me look at some more of the new comments and where you're coming in from. Thank you, Maribel. I do my best to try to, to give you uh, specifics. Hi to everyone. Looking at uh, some others. Has anyone used the presentation coach or when you have a specific PowerPoint using it with, um, with your slides and recording yourself? I possibly should pause a little bit and wait to see answers. I'm guessing, I'm guessing if you're not, you're going to be using them soon as we go forward too. So personally, sure, Carlos, you're welcome too. So um, hello from Athens, Greece, more of my Athens, Greece friends. 
So, so far, we've talked a little bit about <clears throat> tools that help you with productivity, but it also helps you listen to your voice, helps you check for clarity, uh, have, helps you uh, specifically see if you're pronouncing or mispronouncing words as you go uh, specifically. So no like so on Google Play. I'm sorry about that. Uh, again, there are some uh, other options that I share too. I, I'm pretty sure Ori is there as well. Uh, this is new to you. Thank you, Susan uh, and Brittany. Thanks for sharing that as well. I highly recommend there's nothing that takes the place of live practice and getting feedback from others. In the newsletter, I talked a little bit specifically about doing impromptu uh, exercises. This is not with an artificial intelligence tool, but this is specifically for uh, practicing impromptu and maybe using <clears throat> topics and cards. Uh, I shared some topics from Toastmasters. Let's see what Jay uh, has had to say. Can we share that? Yes. Uh, I have a question. I'm strongly emotional, although I practice a lot of speech before giving that. When I'm presenting many times, my emotions are stronger than me. You must be Greek. <laughs> so are there any apps that allow you to practice under several external conditions, which can give rise to some particular emotions, such as stress? So Jay, in this case, I think you're describing external environments that causes stress. And we've talked a little bit about this when we did the uh, invited my uh, sports psychology husband to talk a little bit about this. I would recommend you try as much as possible to spend time in the environment that is going to be that stressful. Even though you may put yourself in front of a screen that has the pictures of all of the people that you're going to be speaking with, or there are caps of video that is a live audience where you walk into the room and if you can play it in a big screen, yes, it's recorded, but you're preparing and you're practicing in front of a live audience. It's helpful if you even put the pictures of people in the room on the chairs and in envisioning there and, and imagining them there. Jay, dressing like you will wear on the day of getting in the room and in the space, none of that should be new to you. And with the emotion, even though you are feeling it, consider filming yourself to see if that's really what it shows to be. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe you're showing the uh, specific, uh, you, you're feeling it, but it's not showing as much as you go forward. So that's really uh, something that you, you may need to continue to practice. And uh, I'll give you an example. I had a student yesterday, we were doing presentations in class, she did, I thought, really well. She stepped up, took Q&A, took questions. At the end, she literally started crying. And I stopped her and I said, is everything okay? Is something happening at home? And she said, no, I'm so terrible. I, I did terrible. Her perception of her performance was not at all clear to where she was. And that created uh, that incredible level of stress for her. So, Jay, it sounds like this may not be the same scenario, but my suggestion to you would be to condition yourself and be in the situations as much as possible where uh, you can practice some of your uh, presentations and you can get a little bit more uh, comfortable with that. There's one more app that I wanted to share with you. And uh, I think I told you the story that uh, the app Danish that created the Ori app, I uh, saw an article about the Ori app on Fast in a Fast Company article, and I found him on LinkedIn and connected with him, and we started chatting. So coincidentally, the creator of uh, this app that is called Udly, uh, his name is Varun, and he has uh, lately we've we've had a lot of back and forth, and I'm using a lot of what he is has created and is sharing. Now uh, I think we're going to share how you can get to Udly.ai, and Udly is a app that uh, helps you again train similar to Ori, similar to like so, but remember like so only is on your phone and you can practice some of that. But with Udly, you can uh, be specifically focused on uh, your intonation and your practice, but it's video and audio where you sh share that as well. And uh, we dropped it right in, in, the, um, in the feed right now where you can share that. 
So um, I have invited uh, the creator, uh, Varun, to, to share uh, and talk a little bit about it. He's not with us just yet, but um, I'll wait for him and tell you a little bit how it's used. So not only can you use it specifically in the example here, I see and I share with you, you can practice an investor pitch or you can practice an impromptu uh, presentation. Or what I like is a lot of our MBA students are doing practices for casing where they get specific questions on specific topics where those questions are entered or you can go ahead and enter some of your own questions or maybe your professor can do the same. Also on Udly, what you can do is take the video. So one of my students can, can hang on to the video that he has, and then he can share it with me or she can share it with me so I can make some comments on what they have. Or you can share the uh, video with some of your friends and connect from there. So when you think about the in interactivity and the connectivity that this AI tool uses, it's really super helpful. What I was hoping to show you with Udly is that it has games that you can play where you can practice your ability to think on your feet. So that impromptu speaking is so super helpful. And you can also practice uh, metaphors. And that's what I had invited um, Varun to, to help me demonstrate here. So I see we've got someone from Lagos, Nigeria. Fantastic. So as I'm buying us a little bit of time and seeing if uh, Varun is joining us, tell me if you have any other questions uh, on some of this uh, artificial intelligence uh, of uh, sharing too. There he is, there he is. So Varun, I have shared everything there is to share and I'm dropping you into the stream, my friend. You're in, talk about impromptu speaking. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I am pumped to be here. And Tatiana, thank you for inviting me. It is fantastic. Tatiana. So I'm going to give you just a, a chance to, to catch your breath. I was talking about all of the different uh, artificial intelligence tools that we have to use to help us become better as speakers. I love your story because um, as same as Danish, uh, you come into a space where you have had trouble in the past uh, with speaking. I, I, I think that's the part of his story. But part of your ethos is I want to help a lot of my uh, colleagues who may not speak English as a first language to get better and reduce some of their anxiety, right? Totally. Uh, yeah, my, my super quick story is I grew up in India. Um, you know, I, I've seen so many people struggle with public speaking and public speaking could be speaking up on a date at a job interview and a roundtable discussion. I came here for college. I, I struggled trying to fit in. Uh, and I'm wondering if technology can play a role helping people just become more confident. Um, so that's, that's the dream here. And it's perfect that you show up. You're the surprise that I had at the end of our program. So I've been talking to myself this whole time with some great questions from our viewers, who, by the way, are anywhere from Tunisia and Mumbai and Athens, Greece and Alabama and all over the place. So I think we're going to have you share your screen. Is that right? And yeah, sure. what we were going to do is you were going to kind of walk us through it a little bit. And then we have a few minutes that I get to be the contestant in the games and hopefully not crash and burn and be able to do this. We practice this, right? We got it. Love it. I'm, I'm all about going, going impromptu. Uh, yes. Can you see my screen? No. Okay. Let's get the sharing thing work. again so if you want to on online now we shared a uh, utily.ai and you were able to i think i can share my screen uh varun but i think you need to share your screen and that's what will help yep for some reason what's the link to utily can we drop in the utily.ai again i think it's a little further up at 319 we shared it Yep, it's at www.udly.ai. Um, there we go. Yeah, we just shared it again. There we go. So I'm going to add this to the stream and tell us a little bit about it before we uh, you put me through the ringer here. Cool. I can I can show you rather than tell you. So the idea is anytime you've got an upcoming uh, presentation, speech, keynote, come and practice on Udly and you will get AI powered analytics. So as an example, let's say I have an upcoming speech. Uh, we build simple AI technology to help people practice and get better. So 
You know, far too often people take presentations where they're hidden in the corner or they're up close and personal. So we built <laughs> simple, simple technology to help people center themselves on screen. I can give myself a target speaking time, call it a minute. And so this is this is the, the centering technology, right? Um, Love I'm it. currently too far in the corner. Yeah. And I can just start. So tell us about Udly. Um, hello, like um, everyone. I'm, you know, um, really um, um, excited to tell you about my technology. Um, I think it's crazy. It's really um, crazy that two out of three people struggle from the fear of public speaking. And now I'm really excited. And what if we could build technology to help people get feedback on their verbal, visual, vocal communication skills and improve their public speaking without the pressure of an audience? And I've got, I've got to slow down. I've got to slow down. Anyhow, I stopped. Great. So I did that on purpose, of so course. Show, show me, show me what the app is going to tell you. Fantastic. So this is this is Fernando. I'll get to your question in just a little bit. Yeah. So so let, I, I I titled my my speech as demo, and you can see a bunch of my analytics on the right. How I did on my timing relative to my total time, my use of filler words which have been shown on my transcript, my use of hedging words. You know things like really. I love that. Tell us tell us a little bit about the hedging words. Hedging right. words are words that signify a lack of confidence. You know, when you use them for emphasis, they are powerful, but very often we use them as a crutch. Very, really, basically, totally, you know, kind of, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got, Great. you know, fun analysis. Like I died with Priyanka Chopra, who's my favorite actress in India. So I think it's not that <laughs> thing. And there you go. You can see you can see my pacing, uh, which it's going to take a second. So it's it should I mean you went slow and then you went fast so pacing it's gonna is it gonna give you a good uh... yep it gives it gives me analytics on my on my pacing on my use of top keywords my articulation my use of non inclusive language and so forth um, sure typically I need to do a speech greater than thirty seconds to see all of those analytics at length but sure. that's the gist of the tool and then I can collaborate with friends to get feedback so you know as an example if I sent my this speech to a buddy. Let's call it Varun at udly.ai. And I say, I would love your feedback. Varun sure. can come in and start giving me feedback. Tell us about Udly. Um, start with a hook as an oh, example. Hello, like um, everyone, slow down. I'm, you know, so all of the feedback is time synchronized. I can click into that feedback. Oh, um, and I'm taken to that exact frame uh, in the speech. So your friend can look at it and go from there, right? Okay, so here it is, Chad. Uh, can we take the question uh, just for a minute from Fernando? Was talking about charisma. I think this is an important one to think about. He says, "I have a question. What about charisma? There's something that AI can help us with." Uh, you, uh, thank you, Fernando. I appreciate that. I think charisma is a combination of of energy, of nonverbals, of confidence. I've done a whole newsletter on your abs, uh, your strong abs can speak to your confidence, how you stand, how you carry yourself. Uh, how can AI measure charisma, Varun, uh, that you have in Udly? I don't think I have charisma, to be clear. Uh, I think AI is getting there, but so much of speaking and charisma is based on confidence, right? Can you just look someone in the eye and say, here's what I've got? Where AI can help is it can be an enabler, but not the solution. Right. I think human speech is spontaneous and authentic and nuanced and charisma just comes from the core of who you are. A lot of charisma comes from practice. Yeah. AI can enable this practice, but I don't think AI will ever be able to give you feedback on, yes, you were charismatic or no, you were not. We can tell you, you know, you varied your voice or your volume or your pitch, but charisma has that special oomph that, that I think has to do with being human. Yeah. We have someone from Bremen, fantastic. One th more thing I wanna say, Fernando, I have a course called uh, Developing an uh, Authentic Elevator Pitch. Uh, authentic pitch, not even an elevator pitch. And I talk a lot about the balance between warmth and competence. Charisma is the blend of the two because as Varun says, you have to, and I would argue that you said I don't have charisma, don't, don't say that because a lot of it is your authentic self you bring yourself to the the conversation and you're excited about what you do a lot of the charisma plays out to this and you have to come across as being warm and likable people look at that first and, and they judge that first I, again fernando practice 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 and get feedback on what it is that could make you seem more comfortable in front of a group and more charismatic 
let's play games. Let's play games. Cool. So the idea behind this is so much of speaking, especially off the cuff, is just backing yourself, right? To Fernando's question, it's can you be charismatic? Um, we built a series of fun AI-powered games to help people. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll play the first one, and then I'll get Tatiana to play the second one, if that's okay. Does that work, Tatiana? No, we should take turns. We should play both. By okay. the way, you're going to add more games to that, right? Because I think this is exactly what people need to see and practice with, too. Totally. And, and think of these games as warm-up exercises, right? If you are an athlete and you're playing football or soccer, you need yes. to stretch your, your legs before you get on field. It's the same thing. At the start yes. of every day, if you're speaking, you've got to warm up your vocal cords and yes. be ready for the day. Absolutely. Okay. So the first game is called Spin a Yarn. The game is, you know, far too often we know what we're going to talk about. We have our script ready, but the moment someone interjects us, you know, our manager looks at their phone or our crush walks into the room or someone coughs or asks us a question, we lose our train of thought. This game is about maintaining your train of thought. So let's choose the hard level. I'll give us a one minute. Yeah, you know, I don't want to play the hard level live on the LinkedIn. That's too hard. Okay. Okay. So Tatiana will give you medium level and you. you ready? Three, two, one, start. Uh, where would you live if you had an unlimited budget? Oh my goodness. There's so many places, but you know that I'm from Greece and uh, from Greece, where where the light shines so strongly, you don't even need light bulbs up until the end of the day. And when you wake up and you brush your teeth, it's beautifully lit outside. Your mother always chases after you to brush your teeth, by the way. And it's a, a beauty of a country with so much light, trees and branches that are full of leaves. Uh, so every day when you wake up and you bring your tray to your breakfast table, you think of wanting to be outside and wanting to, to be part of that energy and force that gives you the ability to, uh, to live in a, in a square foot of space, but with a lot of energy being out there. And uh, fistful, what the heck? I don't know what to use with that word. Patrol man, stop. I can't. Um, I, I give up. White flag wave. You did well. You got you got a, you got a score of six, you got a score of three. You had six hits and three misses. Ah, okay. I need to practice, and that's the medium level, right? So for that everyone is. who saw this, we haven't practiced this. This is totally random. This is exactly the activity that you need to do, where you're constantly able to to pick up. And I find for my students, Q and A in presentations is where you need to use this for, because the people asking you questions will take you off the rails and distract you and you need to come back and connect with them uh, specifically and bring it back to that. I try, thank you for my enthusiasm. All right, let's play the other game. Cool. And, and, you've, got, and you've, got your, you've got your high score here, you've got a daily streak of, uh, of two. To be clear, for, for most users, if you, if you play this 10 days in a row, you will see yourself being funnier, mm. wittier, and you'll just have more fun uh, when you're hanging out with friends. Right. And this is in your privacy of your own home. Nobody sees that, right? Correct. Great. Okay, are you ready for the next game? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. The game yeah. is about uh, building quick analogies on the fly, right? Far too often, we are put on our feet. It's all about say, like saying something that doesn't make sense, but still backing yourself. Um, this okay. game is about chuckling at yourself and building quick analogies on the fly. Okay. Can you play it first? Because I don't remember this, honestly. Okay. Okay, I will play it first. I'm going okay. to give myself. You wrote the code, so you know how to do it. No, I don't actually. Uh, we keep changing them around. So, uh, so my engineers do this to tease me. Bathing is like studying for finals because both are extremely painful and, you know, you're very smelly. Okay, before. I'll do the next one. Climbing a ladder is like public speaking because half the time you feel like you can't get to the end without sweating. Having a crush is like a waterfall because uh, both can hurt you really badly if you don't. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Water is like watching basketball because it can come at you fast or then it can be really slow and smooth. Wearing pants is like meeting your soulmate because you have to do it one step at a time. You have to wear your pants one leg at a time. All right. I can't. A bad date is like gas because it can be smelly. <laughs> there we go. So that was the game. This okay. game doesn't have AI feedback. It's just meant to be fun. And we're building right. a series of games to help you work on your filler words and your pacing, your eye contact and much else. <laughs> A bad date is like gas because it can be smelly. I so, yeah, know that was, that was that that live stream, right? Yeah, you, you might get in trouble on LinkedIn. Yeah, as that was quite the, like if my kids said that, they'd be like, mom, that's like a middle school joke. Sorry about that. So uh, Varun, thank you so much. This is exactly what I was envisioning 
as uh, I shared a lot of the, I was starting to talk a little bit about Udly, but there's so much to see when you actually can play it out and see it. Any any parting words? No, that's it. Uh, you know, we are early stage. You get the dream. We're trying to help people around the world, especially in India, where I'm from. And, and the, the cost? The, it is free of cost. The tool is at www.udly.ai. Break it, test it, let us know what you think, and happy speaking. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Everyone, thank you so much for attending. Again, follow the newsletter Stronger next week or next month. We're going to talk about strategies for non-native speakers. And uh, the following month, I've got another surprise in May coming up. So really appreciate your questions. We'll try to answer some more in the feed. Have a great rest of your day and your week. Take care. Bye-bye.